Born into privilege, Wesley Deeds III was groomed by his father to take over his family business and by his mother to be a gentleman. Others have made Wesley's life decisions since he was five years old. Wesley is on track for his wedding to Natalie, who is only a few months away, at this point in his life. Natalie is doing her makeup in front of the mirror while Wesley showers and gets ready for work. Natalie is amazing, according to Wesley. They complement each other well. People must think he has no reason to be unhappy, but Wesley sometimes wonders if he is living his own life or someone else's. Natalie is familiar with Wesley like the back of her hand. She can anticipate his responses before he even thinks about them. Wesley and Natalie both have work calls during breakfast. Natalie asks Wesley what he wants for breakfast, but before he can say anything, Natalie knows exactly what he will say. They sync up like clockwork. Wesley arrives at his brother Walter's apartment to pick him up. He is standing outside the building when he notices a woman shouting. The woman and his brother are at odds. She scolds him for being a drunk and a nobody. Wesley motions for Walter to join him in the car. In a bad mood, the man leaves the woman and sits inside the car. He instructs Wesley to simply drive. Wesley inquires as to how long it will be before he receives his driver's license back. Walter reacts with hostility. He doesn't require Wesley. If Wesley gets tired of driving him, he can hire a driver. Wesley tries to console his brother, but Walter is enraged. He informs Wesley that their mother will not approach the judge about returning his license. He asks Wesley if he will do it for him, but the man declines. Why can't Walter just get his license back like everyone else who has had multiple DUIs? Walter snaps, claiming that his father would have done it for him out of love. Wesley informs them that they all adore him. Walter believes their mother has an unusual way of expressing her love. Wesley convinces him that the woman has been through a lot with him and is exhausted. He informs Walter that they will be having lunch with their mother. Walter erupts with the force of a raging volcano. He does not want to deal with the woman, but Wesley will not back down. The building manager knocks on Lindsay's door. He's there to collect the rent, but Lindsay still hasn't received it. He begs her to hurry, the owner could have dispatched the sheriff by now. Lindsay asks for more time. She motions to her daughter, who is getting ready for school inside the apartment. She begs Milton, the manager, to inform the owner that she will have the funds by today. She leans against the closed door, worried and stressed. Then she pulls an envelope containing cash from under her mattress. Her daughter, Ariel, who is present, asks if they are going to be extinguished. Lindsay does not want her to be concerned about anything, she persuades the girl to hurry up. They need to come to a halt before school. Wesley and Walter arrive at the office around the same time as Lindsay. They both head for the same parking spot, but Lindsay gets there first. Wesley gets out of the car and tells her that she has parked in his spot, but Lindsay rushes out, saying she won't be there long. Wesley chases her down, telling her that he needs to get to a conference call in five minutes, but she flees. Walter makes fun of his brother's attempt to stop the woman. To stop the woman, he yells an expletive. When Lindsay hears herself being ignored, she takes a step back and gives Walter the stink eye. How dare he address her in that manner? The man doesn't care about her and yells at her to move her car. Lindsay takes a step away from him. Wesley accepts defeat, but Walter is unyielding. Wesley chastises him for his foul mouth. Despite Wesley's protests, Walter orders a tow truck. When Wesley notices Ariel in the car, he requests that Walter transfer the conference call to the car. Walter is disgusted by his brother's saintly demeanor. Ariel notices Wesley staring at her and informs him that she does not speak to strangers. When Wesley starts calling the little girl out for having an attitude like her mother, he gets Walter to sit back in the car. Lindsay meets with her boss at work and requests her pay. She needs the check right away because she has to go somewhere for a couple of hours. Lindsay's shift begins in 30 minutes, according to the manager. Lindsay promises to make amends to the woman later, but she needs to get somewhere. Lindsay receives her paycheck and discovers that it is less than what she is owed. She inquires about it with the manager, who informs her that Human Resources received a call from the IRS. Lindsay's pay has been withheld because she is behind on back taxes. That is not an option for Lindsay. She requires the funds immediately. She asks the manager if she can get an advance on next week's pay, but the woman tells her that the company will take the majority of her pay for the next six months. Lindsay is in trouble. The manager offers her a shift from 4 to 11, but Lindsay is unable to leave her child alone at night. Lindsay is barely holding herself together. This is a catastrophe for her. The manager inquires whether Lindsay is interested in the position. The woman is forced to accept it. She wipes her tears away and walks her daughter to school. Back in the parking lot, Wesley and Walter drive to the meeting. He learns that Walter agreed to a deal that has caused some issues and has made the news. Wesley, rather than becoming agitated, decides to burn the midnight oil and iron out the kinks. When the tow truck arrives, it begins to tow Lindsay's car away. Wesley watches as a rider on a Harley Davidson passes them by. 
Walter suggests that his brother rent a bike and travel to Mexico to meet up with his friends. That is not something Wesley has time for. He has a company to run. Walter assures him that he can handle the situation. It was Walter's dream, not Wesley's, to run their family business. Wesley, on the other hand, has no faith in him. Instead of just saying it, he asks his brother to demonstrate that he can do a good job. Lindsay returns to the parking lot, only to discover that her car has been towed. While Walter remains agitated, Wesley manages to calm him down. Lindsay asks the man towing her car to release it. She turns to Wesley and curses him for towing her car. When Ariel notices the commotion outside, she requests that her mother's car not be towed, but Walter complains that it is a lesson for the girl. Lindsay warns him not to talk to her daughter. They have a falling out, and Wesley asks his brother to accompany him upstairs. Lindsay gets inside the car and hugs her daughter when she can't reason with the two men. Wesley, being the gentleman that he is, lets the woman go this time. Walter is dissatisfied with his brother's decision. The man is a ticking time bomb. Lindsay is already late when she drops Ariel off at school. Lindsay is sprinting through the hallways to get to class when Ariel's teacher stops her. She wishes to speak with you. Lindsay sends Ariel to class and then turns to speak with the teacher. The teacher warns her about Ariel's habit of arriving late to school. Lindsay is also frequently late in picking her up. Lindsay is irritated by the teacher's warning. She was already having a bad day. She responds in hushed tones that she will get Ariel to school on time and walks away. Natalie and Wesley's mother, as well as Natalie's friend Heidi, are out dress shopping. Mrs. Deeds is overjoyed that Natalie is marrying Wesley. Her mother is as well. Mrs. Deeds, on the other hand, is irritated when her mother inquires about Walter. She would rather not speak about her son. Wesley, on the other hand, is a good son. Both mothers are eager for Natalie and Wesley to have children. Natalie doesn't seem eager to talk about it just yet. She suggests they start with the engagement party. When Mrs. Deeds asks Natalie if she wants children, her mother responds on her behalf, saying, of course she does. Natalie, on the other hand, makes no contributions. Mrs. Deeds jokes that she should get started because she isn't getting any younger. Lindsay returns home to find all of her clothes discarded on the street. Lindsay is inconsolable. She accuses Milton and screams at him. How could he have done this? The man expresses regret. This was done by the owner, not by him. Lindsay looks under the mattress and discovers that the money she had stashed there has vanished. Milton tries to calm her down, but she is enraged. She takes whatever she can from the street and drives away. Mrs. Deeds shows up for lunch. She greets Wesley warmly, but when it comes to Walter, she tells him to stand up straight and greet him. They all take a seat after the man hugs his mother. Mrs. Deeds looks proudly and lovingly at Wesley. She tells him about her wedding gown. It's not quite her style, but it should suffice. Wesley is reminiscent of his father. Walter advised him not to get married. Mrs. Deeds casts a sharp look at her second son. She informs him that, unlike the trailer park cheerleader Walter married, Natalie comes from a respectable family and is a wonderful lady. Her remark stings, and Walter responds by reminding her that their father also met her in a trailer park. Wesley tries to lighten the load on his brother. He inquires about the engagement party preparations, but the distraction is brief. Mrs. Deeds is displeased when she sees Walter drinking liquor in the middle of the afternoon. The man responds that since he has to sit with her, she should be thankful it isn't a mountain of powder. Mrs. Deeds wishes Walter had more in common with his brother. Mrs. Deeds was only interested in seeing Wesley, but he insisted on bringing his brother with him. Wesley informs her that if she wishes to discuss the family business, Walter must also be present. She inquires as to whether Walter still attends his meetings. Wesley assures her that he will make certain of it. He inquires of his mother about the situation. She tells him she read about their business in the paper and wants to know if everything is fine. Walter scoffs and accuses her of being self-conscious. The lady informs him that his father worked extremely hard to build their company, and she does not want anything to jeopardize that. Walter quips sarcastically that Wesley will figure it all out for her. Mrs. Deeds is certain he will, and Walter will try to sabotage it in some way. This enrages Walter, and he gets up to leave. When Wesley tries to stop him, he reminds him that he is unable to drive because their mother has locked his car in the office garage. He's just going out for a cigarette. Mrs. Deeds is irritated when he leaves. It takes a lot of patience to deal with her son. Wesley assures her that everything is fine. Lindsay sneaks her daughter into her workplace, Deeds Incorporated. She sneaks Ariel into the supply closet and asks her to remain there. She promises to return in an hour to check on her. Ariel is terrified, but Lindsay encourages her to be a big girl about it. Ariel wants her father, but Lindsay asks her daughter not to. She leaves her with a blanket and a doll, promising to return soon, and goes to work. Wesley is in his cabin when Walter walks in, working on a report with his friend and employee, John. He wishes to return home, but Wesley informs him that he still has work to do. Walter feels the same way. Walter hands him the report he was assigned to work on. 
The man storms out of the room, claiming he will take a cab. Wesley is helpless to do anything but sigh. Walter's attitude, according to John, has exhausted everyone in the office. He sleeps with the staff and performs poorly at work. Wesley tells him that his father asked him to look after his brother, and he will. Heidi, John's wife, is out with Natalie that night, and the man needs to go home to care for his children. He asks Wesley to accompany him, but the man must stay and solve the problem his brother caused. Heidi and Natalie arrive at their friend Mark's fashion show. Heidi is relieved to have a night off from caring for the kids. Natalie requests that they refrain from discussing her children because it is all they ever do. She realizes she said something rude and apologizes, but Heidi agrees. It's a ladies' night out. There are no children or husbands. It's going to be a long night of revelry. Heidi instructs Natalie to call Wesley and inform him of the situation, but they're not that type of couple. Heidi is perplexed by what that means. Natalie informs her that they do not communicate as couples do. That strikes Heidi as odd. Natalie doesn't need to check in with Wesley because she always knows what he'll do. He does the same thing every time. She is aware he is at the office at the time and has not checked in with him. Heidi thinks it's strange and crazy. It's late at night. Lindsay is on the cleaning crew. While Wesley works inside his cabin, she cleans the floors and takes out the trash. When Wesley solves the problem he was working on, he calls John to inform him. He is pleased with his discovery and requests that the man set up a meeting for him the following day. When Wesley walks, Lindsay is in the bullpen, using the office phone to make a call. He clears his throat, and the lady, terrified, quickly hangs up the phone. She had no idea anyone else was in the office that night. Wesley informs her that making such a call is grounds for termination. Lindsay laughs at him. Will he inform the old white man who runs that company about her? Wesley is surprised to discover that Lindsay has no idea who he is or that he owns the company. She believes it is a white man who is evil to all of the employees. Wesley keeps that knowledge to himself. He reminds her that he is the guy who parked in her spot at the time. Lindsay realizes this and apologizes to the man, believing he will fire her. Wesley tells her that when he saw her daughter in the car, the little girl was terrified. It brought back memories of his childhood. He was on a trip to the Maldives when his father told him not to go in the water because the man couldn't swim. However, Wesley did not listen and jumped in. That day, he almost drowned. He tells Lindsay that children do not understand what adults do, so she should not leave her daughter in the car alone. He tells her not to use the phone again and is about to leave when Lindsay intervenes. She inquires as to how many children the man has. Wesley doesn't have any children. Lindsay laughs. That's exactly what she was thinking. She requests that he not lecture her on how to raise her child. They part ways, but Lindsay stops the man and asks him how he got out of the water. Wesley informs him that his brother jumped into the water and saved him. The woman mocks him, saying he should have just stayed on the beach. When she walks away, Wesley watches her with an inexplicable fascination. Lindsay is parked on the street outside the building late at night. She has no place to go. Wesley approaches the woman across the street and asks her to lower her window. He irritates her by following her around. Wesley is pleasantly surprised to see Ariel jump out of the back seat. He wonders what she's doing there so late, and Lindsay lies to him about the sitter dropping her off. Wesley advises the woman not to stay because his secretary was mugged one day, but Lindsay ignores him. She raises her window. The man drives away but then returns. He motions to Lindsay to open the window. His constant presence irritates the woman. She inquires as to his well-being. Wesley asks her the same question. Lindsay lies yet again, claiming that her car won't start and that she is stuck in traffic. He suggests calling a tow truck for her. The woman reminds him that he has done this before. Wesley offers to drive her home, but Lindsay insists that it is fine. She will be picked up by a friend. Wesley agrees to wait until her friend arrives. Despite Lindsay's protests, he parks his car on the side of the road. As the man approaches her car, she instructs her daughter to remain silent about their situation. He walks over to Lindsay, who lets him into her car. He introduces himself and tells Ariel his name. He introduces himself to Lindsay as Wesley Deeds. It takes the woman a few seconds to realize this. But when she does, she is taken aback. Lindsay is extremely embarrassed. She apologizes to the man and fears she will be out of work soon. Wesley reassures her that everything is fine. Lindsay is in a pickle because he still insists on waiting with her. She can't tell her boss she doesn't have a place to stay. Ariel approaches the man and is about to tell him that she was in the office that day when Lindsay asks her not to bother him. Wesley notices the items in Lindsay's car. The lady informs him that she is in the process of relocating. Wesley offers to buy them pizza when Ariel's stomach grumbles. Lindsay tries to stop him, but he persists. Lindsay is agitated by the situation, but she has no choice but to go along with it. Natalie has been dancing all night long at the club. Mark and Heidi are concerned that Natalie is keeping something from them. Why has she not yet introduced Mark to her fiancé? 
The first week they met, she introduced them to her college boyfriend, Renee. She was head over heels in love with him, but she rarely speaks about him now. Natalie assures them that they are overthinking things and that she simply wants to party. Wesley notices Ariel looking at a video game at the pizza place. He invites her to join in the fun. The girl does, but her mother does not have enough money to do so. Wesley brings the girl to the game. Wesley and Lindsay bond over their love of motorcycles at the table. Lindsay informs him that Ariel's father used to work at Baker Boys Bikes. Wesley is familiar with that location. He had spent his childhood there. He tells Lindsay about his friends and their dream of riding their bikes around the world and digging wells in remote villages. But when his mother found out, she was furious. Lindsay believes the man has a good heart to want to do this. When Wesley asks if she rides, she admits to being a pro. Wesley bursts out laughing. That is something he would like to see. Lindsay inquires if she has been fired. Wesley reassures her that she is not. He admits, however, that she did make his day more interesting by speaking to him in such an uncensored manner. No one ever speaks to him in that manner. Lindsay finds it unfortunate that no one ever tells him the truth. Wesley responds that people tell him the truth, they are just not as rude as she was. Lindsay likes to think of herself as direct rather than rude. She inquires as to what his company does. Wesley goes off to explain the work in technical terms that the woman doesn't understand. He simplifies the situation by telling her that they sell computer software. It was his father's dream. Wesley inquires about Lindsay's dreams. The woman hesitates before telling him she was in nursing school. She had to leave two years ago because her husband was killed in Iraq. He was in the military. After that, she was solely responsible for everything. Lindsay informs the man that her boyfriend is on his way to pick her up. He might get the wrong impression if he sees them together. Wesley recognizes her concern and leaves some cash for the bill. Lindsay steals and pockets the tips from his money. Wesley drives the mother-daughter duo to their car, hoping that Lindsay's boyfriend arrives on time. Ariel immediately inquires about the boyfriend. Lindsay whispers to her daughter. Wesley waves them off and continues on his way. Lindsay exhales a sigh of relief as his car vanishes. Natalie, who is inebriated, is dropped home by Mark and Heidi. They startle Wesley awake. The man returns to find his fiancée happy and drunk. Natalie wants to get intimate with her man after everyone has left, so they settle on the couch, but Wesley insists on closing the blinds first. Natalie is unconcerned about the neighbor watching them because she is in a good mood, but Wesley's insistence irritates her. The man has never done anything spontaneous in his life. Natalie walks away from him, and Wesley is perplexed as to what went wrong. Lindsay takes her daughter to a public restroom the next morning to wash up and get ready for school. The little girl complains about being hungry, but Lindsay does not have any money to feed her. She informs her that she is permitted to eat at school. That morning, Wesley and Walter meet with the Brunsons. Wesley tries to make a deal with the other man, offering to buy his business. Mr. Brunson admires Wesley's business acumen and the zeal with which he has advanced his father's company. Walter sabotages Wesley's progress by opening his mouth and saying things that offend the other party. The Brunsons get up and walk away. Wesley is completely dissatisfied with Walter, but Walter is explosive. He doesn't believe he said anything inappropriate. He storms out in rage. Lindsay stands in line to enter a homeless shelter. She introduces herself to the woman in charge of the line, but asks if she can hold a spot for her and her daughter after 11 p.m. because that is when she gets off work. Lindsay is aware that she is breaking the rules, but she requests the woman as a last resort. The woman inquires about the age of her daughter. Lindsay informs her that she is six years old. Hearing this, the woman feels sorry for Lindsay and agrees to assist her. Lindsay is overjoyed. Ariel's teacher waits with her after school for Lindsay to pick her up. Lindsay's tardiness irritates the teacher. The teacher inquires as to why Ariel is always hungry at school. She wonders if the girl gets enough food at home. Ariel informs her that she eats on occasion. The teacher asks if anything is wrong at home, but Ariel refuses to say anything. She is concerned that her mother will get into trouble. However, the teacher assures her that nothing of the sort will occur. Ariel finally admits that they sleep in the car. Lindsay arrives and puts Ariel in the car before the teacher can say anything. Lindsay denies being homeless when the teacher asks if she is. If Lindsay does not speak freely to her, the teacher threatens to contact child welfare. Lindsay dismisses her concern and drives away. The woman prevents herself from collapsing. She eventually yells at her daughter for telling others about their situation. Ariel expresses regret. Lindsay warns her that if she continues to do this, they will take Ariel away from her. The child is both sorry and sad. Wesley is working late that night. He spills coffee on his papers by accident. When he goes into the supply closet to get a tissue roll, he discovers a sleeping Ariel in the corner. Lindsay is looking for her daughter throughout the office when she runs into Wesley. The man stops the concerned woman and informs her that her daughter is in his cabin. Lindsay exhales a sigh of relief, but she is concerned that the man dialed child welfare. That was not done by Wesley. 
Lindsay makes an attempt to reach her daughter. She is furious at the girl for leaving her spot, but Wesley forbids her from approaching her. Wesley wonders why Lindsay's relatives or boyfriend couldn't look after Ariel while she worked. She informs him that she has ended her relationship with her boyfriend. He tells her how terrified the little kid was and how he had to coerce her into accompanying him. Lindsay is accused of child abuse by him. The woman states unequivocally that she would never harm her daughter. The two have a disagreement about Lindsay's treatment of her six-year-old daughter. He compares Ariel to his own childhood, which irritates Lindsay. Ariel is not eating with a silver spoon. Her situation is not the same as Wesley's. Wesley is tired of hearing about his privilege from her. Lindsay asks if he knows how much a gallon of milk or a gallon of gas costs. When was the last time the man had to worry about not being able to pay his bills? The man is rendered speechless. Lindsay leaves with her daughter. When she arrives at the shelter, the man lets her in from the back. He directs them to their bed. Lindsay tucks Ariel in and cuddles her to sleep. Natalie is still awake when Wesley arrives home that night. He appears concerned, and Natalie offers to speak with him about it. But Wesley has it covered. They start talking about Natalie coming home drunk the night before. Wesley wonders if she's okay, and Natalie assures her that it's all because of work and the engagement party. She later discovers a strand of blonde hair on Wesley's pillow. Wesley has no idea how that got there. He wonders if Natalie is accusing him of being unfaithful. That is ridiculous to the woman. She was about to say that the housekeeper should be cautious. Her response irritates Wesley. He inquires as to how much a gallon of milk costs. Natalie is unaware that the man is lactose intolerant. Lindsay is fast asleep in the shelter when a homeless man approaches her. He crawls under her sheet and attempts to force himself on her. Lindsay screams as she struggles with the man. She manages to push him away and flees the scene with Ariel. Wesley is sitting next to Natalie, wide awake. He inquires as to how she is so certain that he is not cheating on her. A little jealousy could be beneficial to their relationship. Natalie explains that this is because he always does the same thing. She tells him that he is simply predictable. Even when they make love, he always does it the same way. Wesley considers her words carefully. Lindsay and Ariel spent the night in the car. The woman hugs and holds her daughter close. The following morning, John walks into Wesley's office. He informs him that the Brunson transaction was successful. However, he appears to be skeptical of Walter's intentions toward the company and toward Wesley. He asks Wesley if he believes his brother is deliberately sabotaging him in order to take his job. When Walter enters the room, John decides to leave. Wesley's secretary then enters with a message for him. Walter reads the message and sees Lindsay's name. Wesley introduces himself as the night janitor. Walter inquires as to whether Wesley is having an affair with her. Wesley does not respond to that with dignity. Wesley tells him he needs to get to work. The man is aware that his brother is upset with him. He wants to make things right, but Wesley refuses to allow him to. He brushed off the man. When Lindsay arrives at the office with Ariel, she discovers that the office has a daycare center that is free for all employees. Ariel enjoys playing with toys, and her mother appreciates Wesley's thoughtfulness. Lindsay enters Wesley's cabin late at night to clean, but is surprised to see him still working. She expresses gratitude to him for the child care center. She is perplexed as to why the man is working so late at night. Wesley has a lot on his plate right now. Lindsay concurs. He does appear stressed. People always think Wesley has it all together, which makes him laugh. Lindsay notices that his shoulders are tense and his brow is scrunched up. She proposes giving him a massage. The man is concerned that she is flirting with him, but she assures him that she is not. Lindsay tells him that he is a very good and kind man while giving him a massage. Later, she tries to get him to open up by forcing him to listen to music, but he is uncomfortable doing so. Lindsay leaves him to his work and goes about her own. Wesley returns home hours later, and Lindsay spends the night in her car once more. They find themselves thinking a lot about each other. Wesley walks into the office the next morning to find Lindsay in the lobby with the child welfare worker. The woman promises Lindsay that she will return Ariel to her as soon as she is able. Lindsay does not want to let go of her child, but she is powerless to do so. Ariel does not want to go, but Lindsay persuades her to be good and that she will return for her. Lindsay runs and hides as they take Ariel away, sobbing. Wesley follows her to the location. Lindsay is breaking down in front of the man, and he can't stand it. He wants to help her, but Lindsay is afraid he will disappoint her like everyone else has. Lindsay sobs and seeks emotional support from the man. Wesley takes Lindsay to her apartment. The woman believes he wants her to clean it, but he is actually offering her a place to live. He informs her that it is one of the corporate apartments and that she can stay as long as she needs to. Lindsay is incapable of doing so. She cannot take advantage of the man in this manner. Wesley understands that she is a proud woman who is accustomed to being self-sufficient, but it is acceptable for her to seek assistance. She is in tears as he hands her the keys and the phone to contact the social worker and get Ariel back. Lindsay is eternally grateful to the man for his assistance. The man has sympathy for the woman. 
He begins to walk away, but Lindsay stops him and embraces him, thanking him for everything he has done for her. Wesley proves Natalie wrong that night by being a spontaneous and unpredictable man. Ariel returns to Lindsay. Lindsay is overjoyed for the little girl, who is overjoyed to be in her new apartment. She apologizes to her daughter for being so harsh on her in recent weeks. Natalie expects to predict Wesley's every move while getting ready, but the man surprises her. He's wearing casual clothes to work because he started a casual Friday tradition. She points out that he was very different last night while getting intimate with her. As if he were doing it to another woman, Wesley thinks that is unusual of him. He even listens to music and dances to it during breakfast. Natalie is taken aback to see him in this light, and a little concerned. Lindsay goes to Wesley's office at work and invites him out to lunch. Walter follows the woman who walks into his brother's office. Wesley agrees to meet her for lunch. Walter looks on as the two of them leave. Outside, Lindsay gives Wesley a motorcycle. She purchased it from Baker Boy's bikes and wishes to ride it with Wesley. She hands him a biker jacket and a helmet. Wesley is both impressed and delighted. He hops on his bike and the two of them ride around the city. They arrive in Santa Rosa, and a few miles later, Wesley comes to a halt on the side of an open field. They spend the day walking by the lakeside, laughing and giggling, until Wesley lifts Lindsay in his arms and kisses her. Wesley steps back from her, telling her he is engaged. Lindsay is embarrassed, but Wesley believes she understands. Back at the office, John informs Wesley that their transaction has been approved. Wesley is overjoyed. This is the best news he's heard all year. John and Wesley decide to have a party. Later, the man proposes a toast in front of his fiancée, mother, and all employees. Lindsay arrives on the scene but decides to leave when she sees the party. Walter notices her and prevents her from leaving. Lindsay desired to speak with Wesley. Walter takes Lindsay to Wesley and introduces her to his fiancée. Natalie compliments Lindsay, but the woman is unimpressed. Wesley's mother is curious about the woman. Walter informs her that she is the janitor. The woman approaches Lindsay and introduces herself. She informs the woman that her son has a habit of taking on small projects and then improving them in order to sell them later. Lindsay can pick up on the hint the woman is attempting to drop. Walter attempts to fuel the fire. He is inebriated, and Wesley requests that he return home. Walter revolts and causes a commotion at the party. Everyone thinks Wesley is the better man, but it was he who made the deal happen. He went to Brunson's house, apologized, and made the deal. Wesley tries to calm him down, but Walter yells again. His father wanted him to run the company, but Wesley won't let him. Mrs. Deeds believes he will destroy the company. When Walter tells her to go to hell, she slaps him across the face in front of the entire office. Walter runs out of his office with Wesley's car keys. Wesley runs after him into the elevator. Lindsay has already entered. Natalie and Mrs. Deeds accompany the brothers as they wrestle with each other. Wesley punches his brother and takes away his keys. Lindsay takes Wesley's hand in hers and inquires about his well-being. When Natalie and Mrs. Deeds notice, Wesley pulls his hand away. They are all trapped inside the elevator. Walter is hilarious. He finds it amusing that they are trapped in the elevator, just as Wesley is trapped in a job he despises. Wesley ends up at Lindsay's apartment that night because he can't sleep or stop thinking about what happened earlier. Lindsay lets the man in, curious as to why he came to her house. Wesley attempts to kiss Lindsay, but she pushes him away. She informs him that she is not merely a project that he can complete in order to feel whole again. Is the man even sure what he wants? He has everything that most people covet, and he isn't even happy. She requests that he discover what makes him happy. Wesley explains why he came to see her. Lindsay does not believe the man is interested in her. She attributes her attraction to him to the difficulties she is experiencing. Wesley accepts her feelings, but he does not want her to express his feelings. He is tired of others making decisions for him. When he leaves, the man breaks down and sobs. Natalie returns home and asks Wesley if he slept with Lindsay. They have a discussion about their relationship and mutually decide that they are not ready to marry just yet. They have different expectations for their lives. Wesley wants children, but Natalie does not. They love each other, but it is insufficient. Wesley and Natalie arrive at his mother's house the next day. There is a large group of people at the house. Mrs. Deeds rushes over to them, but Wesley wants to speak with her first. The woman does not pay attention and introduces the couple to the entire group. Wesley informs everyone that the wedding has been cancelled. The woman wishes to speak privately with his son, but Wesley refuses. He has spent his entire life living for his parents' and father's dreams, but now he will live for his own. He tells her he is leaving to travel the world. He'll see his friends again. He informs them that John will be taking over for him. Walter simply cannot believe it. The man becomes enraged and accuses Wesley of ruining his life. Wesley informs him that Walter is ruining his own life. Lindsay is cleaning the office that night when Wesley arrives. She is overjoyed to see him. She apologizes to him for what happened the night before. Wesley informs her that he will not be marrying and will leave the following morning. He's going to Africa to live his dream and catch up with his friends. Lindsay is pleased for him. 
He informs her that she can stay in the apartment for as long as she needs to. Lindsay appreciates the man. Wesley displays the tickets he purchased for Lindsay and Ariel. He hopes the woman will accompany him, but Lindsay is unable. He leaves them with her in case she decides to change her mind. Lindsay holds back her tears as she thanks the man for everything he has done for her. He also expresses gratitude to her. She had an impact on his life. They kiss goodbye and part ways. Wesley is at the airport when his mother arrives. She has come to see him off. She apologizes to the man and bids him a tearful farewell. Lindsay and Ariel are waiting for Wesley when he arrives at his seat. Wesley is overjoyed to see her, his heart leaps. Lindsay tells him that, despite the fact that what his mother said to her scared her, she wants to take this chance with him. Wesley is overjoyed to see her and immediately takes her in his arms and kisses her.